My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we're going to work on right now is the one that you will find on page number 229. Please turn to page number 229 on the very top of the page where it says 2.6.1 2.6.1 on page 229 and today is our lesson number 106 before we actually solve these questions 2.6.1, point 0.2 and point 0.3 let's first ask ourselves the most fundamental question in order, in, order, in order for us to be able to answer these questions we have to ask ourselves the one the most fundamental question here which is what is a function if somebody were to come up to you and ask you the simple question what is a function will you be able to articulate in a cogent manner in a in a persuasive convincing manner will you be able to tell the person what is a function a lot of people go around saying f of x and f of x this and f of x text, but they have no idea what that means. They cannot articulate it. They, they know the nitty gritty, they know the mechanics of it, but they have no intuition behind it. They don't understand what that means. Let's talk about it, shall we? A function, a function, and this is just a f with an n is how we abbreviate the word function. A function is simply a relationship between <coughs> between two or more variables that's all that's all instead of instead of instead of calling it relationship mathematicians like to be cute they don't call them relationship they call them functions that's all they want to be cute for example here's the relationship between x and y if i tell you that y equals two times x there you go there's a relationship between between these two variables x and the y. What's the relationship? The relationship is that the relationship is very straightforward. The relationship is that when x equals 0, y would equal 0. When x equals 1, 2 times 1 is 2. When x equals 1, y is 2. When x equals 2, y will be 4. And so on and so forth. The relationship here is that every time x goes up by 1 unit, y goes up by 2 units. And that's the relationship between the two. They are related. Similarly, there is another relationship. Y equals 3 times X. That's another relationship. But this relationship is different from this relationship. Here, every time X goes up by 1 unit, Y will go up by 3 units. This relationship, as you can clearly see, is different from this relationship. I have to be able to distinguish between the, these two relationships. I can't go around pointing out the thing and saying that this relationship not that one or this one and not that one. We don't do that in real, world, in real life. In real life, different people, we don't go around saying this one and that one and that guy and this guy. To make our life easier, we give people names. And that is exactly what the mathematicians do. They give this relationship names. So let's give them a name. I'm going to call this relationship, let's, let's name this one first because I wrote this one first. Let's call this relationship F. And I'm going to call this relationship G. That's it. That's their name. That is their name. The name of this relationship, I'm calling it letter G. Now, why do we start with F? Because that was that's what the mathematicians typically like to use. For example, whenever we have unknown, why do we use the letter X? And why not Y or Z or P or M? Well, you could use Y or Z or P or M. Nobody's going to come and arrest you. But the traditional it, uh, dictates that whenever we have unknown, most, most often you will find people use letter X to, to denote an unknown quantity. Similarly, when they're talking about a function, the very first letter they typically tend to use is F, because F starts, a uh, function starts with letter F. And if you have more than one function, then they go on from F to G to H and so on and so forth. So, my first uh, function relationship, I'm calling it F. Now, this is how we write it. This is, this is how we write it. F is a relationship between some variable X and a variable Y. That's what it is. Here is a hello the relationship. This, this relationship is, a, I'm calling it G. G is some relationship between a variable x and a variable y. You see? 
G. Now, how do we read it? I stopped myself here yeah, because we haven't we haven't talked about how to read this thing. How do we read this thing? It is read as y equals f of x. That's how we read it. Y equals f of x. Now, what that means in English language? What does it mean in English language? How do, what does it translate? It, it y equals f of x means means that there exists there exists a relationship between variable x and variable y and and we are calling this relationship F. We have given it a name, we christen it, we call it F. Let's learn these words, shall we? What does it mean, cogent? Cogent means persuasive, convincing, as I said before. And for those of you who want to learn it properly, you can watch the vocabulary videos of mine and learn the word properly. <laughs> Excuse me. Learn the word properly, the word cogent. Day number seven. Just type in, just type in my name here, Kishwani, and then type in vocabulary, day 7, and you will learn this word, uh, cogent, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary. Another word that I just used was christen. I, I don't know if I've covered it or not. I'll go through this all the time. Christen, day number 63. Christen means to name somebody. But that's what it means metaphorically. Literally, of course, you know what christen means. It means to baptize someone. Metaphorically, simply means to give somebody a name. So we christen it, we call it F. Similarly, this relationship that you see here, this relationship here is a different relationship. Y equals G of X. Now what does it mean? Y equals, y equals G of X. What does it mean? It means there exists, it means there exists a relationship between variable X and Y and we are calling it G. Let's say one more relationship, shall we? Let's say one more relationship. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this part right here, the first one. Here's the third one. And of course, I cannot call it F, I cannot call it G, because we have used up those two names. It makes, much, it's less, it makes life easier if we have different name for every individual, if we have different name for every relationship. That way, there is no potential for confusion. So we have used up F, we have used up G, let's call it, let's call it H. Now, we didn't have to call it H, instead of H, Instead of this third, third relationship that I'm about to write, here's the relationship, y equals 1 over x. That's the third relationship. I'm going to give it a name. We're going to give it a name. Let's call it h of x. Now, instead of calling it h of x, instead of calling it h of x, we could have called it, we could have called it, if we wanted to, we could have called it, monkey of x. I'm calling the relationship monkey or hippo of x or Adam of x. I'm calling the relationship Adam. I'm giving it a name. I'm calling it Adam. It'll be silly. It'll be annoying. But if, if you wanted to, you could do that. It's just a name. It has no significance whatsoever. These letters are just names. H of x, G of x, F of x. These are just names of the very, uh, of the relationship. Other than that, they have no no significance at all. In other words, in other words, if I were to raise this thing instead of G of x, if I were to call it M of x, it wouldn't change anything at all. It would still be the same relationship. It's, it's just that now it has a new name instead of G. It has a, it's a it has a name of M. That's all it is. It's just a name. If you change the name, it doesn't change the person. It doesn't change the individual. It doesn't change the relationship. It just changes the name. So let's call it, let's not be funny, let's not be cute, let's call it H of X. That's it, there is a relationship, H of X. That's it, that's our third relationship. And that's all there is. That's all there is. Let's look at the very first example. I need the room here. Let's look at the very first example here. Now before we do the very first example, let's talk about this relationship that I just wrote here. H of X equals 
1 over x. What values of x can we can can this can this function have here? In the previous one, in the previous one here, x can have any values that uh, x can have any values that it wants, anything at all, positive, negative, zero, fractions, decimal, whatever it wants. Y is simply going to be two times the amount. In the next one that we did here, g of x, same thing. There is no limitation on, at all as to what values x can assume. That is not the case here. There is a limitation here. Here, in this relationship, in this relationship, x can have, x can have any value that it wants, except it cannot, it cannot be zero. Why? Because if x were zero, if x were, the statement is purely hypothetical, if x were zero, y would equal one over x, and if x were zero, y would equal one over zero. And any number, any number divided by zero is undefined. It's undefined. It's infinity. Let's put it here. Any number, any number. N stands for any number divided by zero equal, equals infinity. It's undefined. It's undefined, undefined in the sense that it, it, we cannot pinpoint it. it. It doesn't exist. We cannot go, there is no such thing as one infinity plus another infinity equals two infinity. There is no such thing. Infinity is there is some quantity that we cannot pinpoint, which is why it's called infinity. It's undefined. We cannot define it. It doesn't uh, it doesn't have any some numerical value that we can put our hands on. It's undefined. Any number divided by zero is undefined. And because it is undefined, x cannot be zero. Because if x were zero, this quantity will not be definable. It will become undefined. So here, in this relationship, in this relationship, x can have any value it wants, except it cannot be zero. The values that x can have in a function the values that x can have in a function are called domain the domain of this function domain of this function is any value that x wants except 1 and the resulting values of y and the resulting values of y are called its range now you understand I'm explaining all these concepts of function and domain and range in a very simplistic terms enough for you to get by on the exam. Mathematicians will disagree with a lot of things I say here because mathematics, mathematicians are nitty gritty. They are a knowing bunch. They're very nitty gritty. They're very particular. Uh, they want to be. They want everything to be exact. This is good enough for us for the GRE. What we're learning here is plenty good for the GRE, and that's what we have to understand. Okay. That's all there is. So what did we learn so far? We learned what it means, the f of x. We learned how to read it first of all. It's read as f of x, which simply means, f of x simply means that there exists a relationship between a variable x and some variable y. And we're calling the relationship, we're giving it a name, we're calling it f. g of x means it's a different relationship, we're calling it g, and so forth. If you have a relationship like this, this, this function can have any, this function x can have any value except the zero. Now let's do the very first problem. Enough of this. Now, this, now, now let's do the very first problem. We are ready for it. I'm going to do it here. I need the rule. Let's do it here. Let's leave, let's leave this aside too. 
this is this is an important this is an important fact so I don't want to erase this thing let's leave it aside let's put it here Two point six point one. Two point six point one. Here we have a relationship between x and y. We have a relationship between x and y. We are calling it f. Are they calling it f or am I calling it f? They're calling it f. See, they're calling it f. They also gave it a name f. And the relationship looks something like this: two x over x minus six. Now remember, the bottom cannot be zero. If the bottom were zero, if the bottom quantity becomes zero, this whole thing becomes undefined. If the bottom becomes zero, this whole thing becomes I cannot spell the word define if I slow down to write it slowly. I cannot do it. Undefined. If I write it slowly one letter at a time, I cannot, I cannot spell it for some reason. It becomes undefined. The question is, when will this bottom become zero? This bottom will become zero. This bottom will become zero when x equals six. Right here, it's very simple to see. If x is six, six minus six is zero, voila! Which means this this uh, this function in this function, x can have any values it wants, x can have any value it wants, but it cannot be six, because that's where the problem is. That's where the bottom becomes zero, that's what it is. So the domain of this function is, therefore, Therefore, the domain of this function is any value, any value of x at all, except x cannot equal to 6. That's all. Except the x cannot equal to 6. Let's see what how the book says, actually. It says, let f be the function, I'm, I'm reading it, turn to page number 229, look at page 2.6.1 and I'm just reading it, that's it, I'm reading it verbatim. Let f be the function, let f be the function defined by f of x equals to 2x over x minus 6. In this case, f is not defined at x equals 6. That's what it is, that we just feel, it is not defined when x equals 6. Because the quantity over 0 is not defined, hence the domain of of this uh, function consists of all numbers except six. There you go. That's what we said here. The domain of this function is any values of that any values of x at all except x cannot be six. That's it. Let's look at the second one. Let's look at the second one. I need the room, so we need to raise all of this thing, all of it. I, I'm sorry, but it has to go. Okay, I'll give you a couple of seconds, and I'm gonna. I need the tissue paper, so just excuse me, just for one second. I'll be out of the camera for about thirty, uh, for about three seconds. All right, let's do the next one. Out of the frame is what I meant to say, not out of the camera. Anyway, nobody was listening, so we don't, it doesn't matter. Let's look at the second problem that they give us here. The second problem is, I'll well, tell you what, this is enough already for today. I'm not going to start a second one. Let's just leave it at that. That's all it is. I'm going to do the second and the third one in a, in a separate clip so that it doesn't get to be too much. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow where we'll do the 2.6.2 uh, and 2.6.3. And the reason I'm putting off 2.6.2 until tomorrow, there's a reason for it. Here's what I want you to think about. Listen, what does this mean? I want you to think about it for homework. Square root of 9, what does it mean? I want you to think about it and tell me tomorrow. Okay, we're going to talk about what it means, the square root of a number. That's what that thing entails. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye.